What's up everyone, ODC here, and I'm back with another action figure review. Today's review, we're going to take a look at the Mastermind Creations reformatted. This is Dykamis, uh, aka Roadbuster. I'm pretty much just going to call him Roadbuster instead of calling him Dykamis at this point. Uh, but uh, he looks fantastic. Um, he here is here in his vehicle mode. Vehicle mode, quite simple to get him into, quite simple as far as the transformation goes. It's not very uh, difficult uh, and cumbersome as some third-party figures are uh, when it comes to the Transformer-style third-party figures. But uh, I want to say that this is actually an easier transformation than Spartan was, uh, a.k.a. Impactor. Um, but uh, he looks really good, very pleased. Nice, uh, nice rolling wheels with this. I know it's actually kind of rumbling the table <laughs> but he does have some heft to him which is pretty cool um some rubber tires which is really nice um he does have this like front bumper piece which does kind of uh um i guess parts form into uh other parts of his, his um weapon here but we'll get to that in a little bit uh overall i really do like this this um design for him as far as that that's concerned um it's uh pretty much his idw design which is fantastic and uh, for the majority, this is pretty much what I'm collecting for the most part. As far as G1 stuff, I'm pretty much going after like the, the Siege line for my influx of G1. Um, not 100% G1, but uh, that's what I'm going for for that line. But for the third party stuff, I'm going strictly IDW. Um, so that's pretty much my plan here. Everything looks really good. The uh, I like the brown mixed with the orange. Looks very nicely done as far as that's concerned. Um, I like the uh, the little placement of the gun on this side, uh, and you just kind of have to push that down a little bit further. I didn't have it down all the way, I apologize, but uh, yeah, you can fit it on this side, and you can fit it on that side. Simply just want to put that, slide it into that little circular hole right there, and that's how it's supposed to pretty much sit. Uh, <laughs> sorry for the rubbish, but uh, yeah, he's pretty cool. I really dig this design. Um, on the back portion, you can kind of see some, you know, little bit of the hollowness of him, but I, the hollowness never really bothers me with any Transformers figures. It bothers some people. It just doesn't bother me for, I don't know, it's personal preference thing. Um, I mean, from the front anyway, usually hollow pieces are from the back. From the front anyway, I mean, you pretty much, this is how you display a figure. I don't think I've ever displayed a figure like this. You know, who wants to see the back of the figure anyway? So uh, I, th I feel like that's a moot point that people get upset about as far as that's concerned. But uh, the uh, the bumper looks really good. I like that th you can use this as a bumper or you can simply de-peg these and kind of uh, peg them up here if you want to and use those as missile launchers. So you can really arm him up. Oops, sorry about that. You can really arm him up to the teeth. And you can also post them on the side here, pretty sure over here. Uh, I, I mean, it's up to your discretion where you want to put these, but uh, like I said, it does roll really nice. Very pleased with the rollage. Very nice with the paint apps. He's actually got, I want to say he's got more paint apps than Spartan does. Um, we got some nice blue here, blue there, blue there, blue there. And we got like a nice little like uh, grayish blue right here for the windows. That looks pretty cool. And then coming over here, we've got some more of that orange mixed with the brown. You've got some green for the feet, some green for the, the rims, for the wheels. That looks very nicely done. And you can actually take these uh, uh, tires off the rim, which is pretty cool. Uh, over here, we have some silver paint for these little pistons right there on the side of his vehicle mode. That looks really cool. Um, underneath, it's pretty much just his... Uh, you know, his inner workings, I guess you want to call it that. But uh, it's, it, I think that's pretty much it as far as the paint apps go. Got little silver pieces right here on each side right there. And then we do have a little bit of paint right here as far as that orange is continued throughout the body or the, the gun and the body. And then we have a little bit of like a, I don't know, like kind of like a silver painted piston right there for the gun. Everything looks pretty good, very copacetic, very uh, aesthetically pleasing. And uh, yeah, don't have too many issues with the vehicle mode. It's, it is it is what it is. It's a vehicle, it's supposed to look like a vehicle and it looks like Roadbuster and it feels like Roadbuster. So therefore it is a Roadbuster, right? Using the whole 
walks like a duck, talks like a duck. It must be a duck theory. Okay, so as far as this transformation does go into robot mode, um, I like to start off with the legs, so I'm just gonna kind of detach the legs here from the sides. It's very easily done. Just kind of get those out of the way for now. Um, next up, what I like to do is I like to kind of uh, bend this down, pop these up, these little panels, and you're just gonna wanna keep them right there because the wheels are gonna pop up with those and you're gonna wanna get these out of the way of the wheels in a second. So there we go, kind of push those down like so, so the wheels don't bash into them like so. So they kind of feed in between them. Okay, so that's gonna be his back right there, okay? So then you wanna to come to the front. This will be his front in a second. And you just kinda of wanna drop this down just to there. Don't clip anything in yet. I'll show you the clips and everything but just kind of want to feed that in and then just detach the arms, bring those to the side and let's spread everything out. Like I said, I like to start off with chaos and then build order from the chaos. So uh, we're just going to simply pop this flap up. Okay. I'm going to pop that flap up and we're going to fold that in and there's pegs on the inside right here and here and they peg into there and there. We'll just pop those in and then fold that kind of up and the accordions in and it'll just kind of chill right there for now. Um, actually, you can, eh, I'll get to that in a second. Um, so we'll just leave that right there. Now the legs, you're gonna wanna get these legs kind of swiveled, bring them down, swivel, bring those down and then bring the feet out to the side, out of the way, come over here Bring this foot up, and then you're just gonna kinda wanna get these feet done. Just bring those around, snap those into place, make sure that this knee pad is facing up. Swivel the foot, swivel the back heel, and then do the same on this side. Swivel that foot up, swivel that foot down, bring this over and clip that in. There we go, swivel the foot around, swivel the back heel, and there you go, you have his legs all done. And you want this to be swiveled around, that's the front of him. Just line everything up, and you should be good. I know I'm struggling a little bit here, I apologize. <laughs> there we go, with that portion, and then just bring this down, Bring the and the head will just kind of come up on its own here. The head will just kind of come up on its own. Bring these arms out of the way. Bring this whole section down. This entire section is gonna come down. You're gonna to wanna to pop that in there and it'll just kind of flail down and there's a peg here and a peg here and they'll just peg right into the back on their own. No big deal there. Boom, boom and boom. And no, oh, it didn't do the booms. Why you no do the booms? <laughs> There we go, all right. Okay, I'll get these arms up out of the way. Push those back a little bit, readjust the head. And then for the most part, you're almost done. Uh, you just wanna kinda push these little hand pieces back, bring out the hands, bring up the thumb, and bring this up, push that back like so. Bring up the hands, bring up the thumb, and there you go. And that's pretty much Dykemus right there. That is Roadbuster. Let me fix his knee pad there. Nothing really, like I said, there's nothing really crazy about his transformation. It's not really difficult. It's not cumbersome. It's not uh, overdoing it by any means. It's simplistic, I think. And then as far as the weapons go, you can take his weapon right here. And you can set this up any way you want. You can plug that into there like that. And then you can plug this underneath here. So if you want to have him with an extended rifle, you could. Or if you want to imagine that's like a silencer right here and then he's got a grenade launcher underneath, you can go that route as well. Uh, what I like to do personally, it's just my personal preference. I like to leave the grenade launcher on the bottom So, and then when you want to put this in his hand, there's a little slot right here on his hand. 
I'll bring this up so you can see it. Little slot right, come on, focus. Little slot right there. And you just want to kind of feed that into there, like so. Okay. And then just bring the thumb over, bring the hands over, and boom, shellac lock, boom. Very nicely done. And then I like to take the other piece right here that's left over and put it on the shoulder. Like that. And I think that looks pretty damn good. He can actually two hand this. He can two hand it. And there is Roadbuster two handing his rifle. Uh, looking down the sights might be a little bit more of a project. Uh, I want to say it's probably slim to none as far as the chances that you'll get him to look down the sights, but the, you know, the option is open if you want to attempt to do it. There you go. There is his full robot mode transfer transformation. Um, uh, I, I want to point out a couple things that people had gripes with. They don't like the fact that these feet are so little in the front. And then you turn him around to the back, and he's got these big old heels. I don't really mind it, because, like I said, yet again, the majority of people display their figures from the front, so you don't even see the heels. Like, if you display them like this, you're not going to see his heels, so what difference does it make? And then, I don't, I don't know, me personally, I don't really like this look for him. This big old tire in the way, and that's not really how he looks in the comic. So, I don't know, I just... Personally, you can do what you want. At the end of the day, it's your toy, not mine. But for me, this is how I will display him. I don't mind the feet the way they are. And actually, these larger heels kind of help balance the figure as well. Um, I do like these little kind of uh, ammunition rounds on the side of him. That's pretty cool. Nicely sculpted as far as that's concerned. And same thing goes for the other side. Just nice little nuances, nice little details that they add in uh, with Roadbuster here that make him just look so good. Um, he does come with an extra head. Okay, and here's the extra head that he does come with. Um, I think this is a pretty good looking head as well, um, but I just prefer the IDW look for him. Um, this is a, a nice little option though, if you kind of want to switch up his look. Uh, nicely done with the painted eyes. Kind of got that metallic kind of like lime green almost. Looks pretty cool. Very nicely done. And then on the back portion, you can see a little screw, which you do have to adjust the screw. Don't really like this. I'm going to be honest with you. This is like a pet peeve of mine. Screws strip over time. And uh, if you continue to swap out the head, you're going to eventually strip the screw. It's just what happens with screws and uh, um, uh in general uh so if you want to take off the head you do have to loosen this screw up and then kind of this will this piece will separate a little bit from that piece and you can kind of put that over the peg okay as far as this packaging does go it comes in this nice reformatted resealable collector friendly box uh, you can see a picture of, of dicamis on the front roadbuster um, and then you flip to the side it's got this nice grid paneling going throughout the entire box as well it says r23 dicamis commander looks pretty cool you got a nice little display photo of him down there flipping around to the back you've got more production photos um, superhero pose shooting pose walking i'm gonna beat your ass pose uh, i look like a badass pose and behind the back pose and then the vehicle pose pretty cool and then on the side, you get this nice little purple uh, color for the side, R23 Dicamus Commander, and the uh, the other head that he comes displayed with. Pretty cool for the packaging, nice resealable, I dig that. Okay, moving on to the instruction manual and slash the comic. Um, here it is, and I'll just kind of open it up. Like I said, his transformation is very easy. There's his table of contents of all the things that he comes with. Flipping it around, open, so you guys can see everything. Last time in Spartan's video, my thumb kind of got in the way of things, and I'm trying not to do that in this video. So there you go. If you want to pause that and read it, take it in, do whatever you have to do for that, go ahead. There's another one. And it just says if you want to get him into tank mode from uh, robot mode, just do the reverse of this. So go work yourself uh, backwards from what it just told you to do right here. So very simple to do. And then flip it around, invert the book itself, and then you've got another picture of Dicamus right there. There's a really nice, cool picture of him right here. More pictures, and this uh, um, episode is called Uprising. 
uprising with Dykemis. And there you go, you've got some panels, some nice artwork with that. And I don't think any of this is canon, I'm pretty sure it's not. But pretty cool nonetheless that they decided to give you this. So there you go, Get all of that. And there you go, that's the instruction booklet. Okay, and the last little piece of memorabilia that you get is the little trading card, which I think is pretty cool. I'm a fan of the trading card. Some people don't give a shit about them, but I do. Anyway, uh, <laughs> pretty cool that they give us these. I think it's nice, uh, uh, you know, that they do. You give them the strength is an eight, intelligence is a seven, speed is a five, endurance is an eight and a half. They couldn't have just given them the nine. Uh, his rank is an 8, his courage is a 10, firepower is 6, and skill is a 7. Now, what's funny here is that if you saw my Spartan video, Spartan actually pretty much, I want to say, almost beats him in everything and then matches him in courage, but he only got a skill set of a, like a 5 or a 4.5 or something. And I'm like, what the hell? That doesn't make any sense. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Okay, as far as his size comparisons go, up first we've got Guzzle. This is from the Cyberverse line. And uh, I want to say that maybe Guzzle is a legend size, so he's a little bit small. But, um, you know, uh, Dykamis here, a.k.a. Roadbuster, is actually 8 inches tall, so that kind of gives you a scale of what uh, how big he actually is. Okay, up next we've got another third-party figure in the Mech Ideas Gauntlet, a.k.a. Iron Fist. So you can see how he stacks up with him. And I think it's a pretty good scale right here for the two of them. Okay, up next, we've got the Transformers Titan Returns Top Spin. And uh, I think they scale well together. Up next, we've got the Hasbro release Thrilling 30 line Springer. And uh, this is Springer's IDW look. And I think they scale perfectly as well. Okay, last up, we've got the Mastermind Creation Spartan Impactor. And, uh, you know, they scale well together. They're from the same line, so it works. And uh, there you go for your comparisons. Oh, and here's Sir Gideon Heavens brand. Okay, and here's the last shot of Dykamis before I put uh, all the repro labels on. So you'll have a little comparison with a before and after. So here's his before. Okay, and we're back with him all repro labeled up and... Man, he looks really good, I gotta say. Oh my god, what a night and day change. Just some stickers can make, and God knows I'm no big fan of putting stickers on. <laughs> but uh, this does make a huge difference in just the look overall. And uh, he's just so much more aesthetically pleasing now. And uh, I, I would definitely recommend you pick this repro, repro label set up. Um, I think it cost me seven bucks, or I think it was actually on sale for six bucks, but you can pick it up on uh, reperlabels.com for seven bucks. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I'm just throwing out the information. Um, but as far as the sticker grouping goes, um, you know, he's got this covering the silver right here. He's got this little sticker right here. It says Wreck and Rule right here with the little Wrecker symbol right there. Um, I did give him a Wrecker logo. On his forearm right there there's a sticker right there that you add that you can add uh, the sticker on his chest the Autobot symbol this little green sticker um, the Decepticons kind of the kill count of how many Decepticons he's taken care of um, these little black stripes right here were in there these little black stripes right there and the legs these black pieces right here um, these stickers down here in the legs and over there and I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, there's a couple other stickers like on the back uh, for the headlights when you put him in vehicle mode right there. There are some more stickers where you can cover up the blue, but I actually like the blue, kind of a little differentiation between the colors there. So I kept the blue, um, the sticker right here for the little grill, mesh grill uh, portion. And then on the inside of the knees, if you open up the knees, you have little brake lights and caution lights for the back of it when he's in vehicle mode. So that's pretty cool too. And then on the bottom of the feet, you've got these like little um, cool uh, added stickers that you can put for when he's in vehicle mode as well. So that's pretty cool. The inside of the legs also have stickers right there and right there kind of covering up the screws. And then on the outside, you've got this little orange sticker right here 
So really nice stuff. Like I said, I didn't put every single sticker on, but uh, I'm pretty pleased with the majority of the stickers that he came with. And uh, like I said, you can use them to your discretion. You don't have to put every single sticker on there. Um, also with his gun, his gun came with uh, stickers too. Um, let me get my pointer out here. The, he's got little barrel holes right here for the barrel. And then over here, he's got little, like, I don't know, doodads for, for that. Maybe this is, like, how many ammunition rounds he's got in this. And then flipping around to the other side, it mirrors the other side. So that's pretty cool. Everything really nicely done, well thought out, well um, executed as far as that's concerned. Uh, don't really have any, any issues. Uh, one more label I didn't point out was the labels on this side and on the other side of the forearm. And then he's got, like, a little belt label right there. Let me focus here. He's got a belt label right there and then another one right here on the chest. So he's pretty well a repro labeled up. I think it looks really good. It does change the entire look drastically uh, for the figure. And it just adds that extra oomph that I think the figure need to be great now. So um, there he is with the repro labels. Okay, and one last comparison I wanted to make was with the Hasbro release from the Thrilling 30 line. Oh man, look at the huge difference in the quality with Dicamis as opposed to the Hasbro release of uh, Roadbuster. So you've got the real deal Roadbuster right here, and then you've got the, I don't know, stick bug version of Roadbuster right here. <laughs> oh man, I just it, it's just a glaring huge difference between the two. Even the trans transformations is so much smoother with this one as opposed to this one. It just feels kind of cheaply made and, I don't know, ill-proportioned and stick buggy. Okay, as far as Roadbuster's articulation does go, his head can swivel side to side right here. So I'm pretty much on a ball peg. And then it can look up really well, actually. Um, and he can look down pretty well. This actually does rotate. And we do have some, some Jav turkeys up in here. <laughs> So there's job turkeys in there. You can also get the little head tilt, which is great. I love the head tilt. You know, and on a larger figure, you wouldn't think with all this neck room kind of being claustrophobic, um, you would think that there wouldn't be a whole lot of motion for his ocean, but there is. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the arms go up about that far and uh, they don't actually hit his head. So that's good clearance right there. Uh, they go down. Uh, good luck doing a full 360 rotation with these arms because all they want to do is just bang into these. Kind of wish that we would have got a little bit better clearance for these arms to just kind of move back and forth. You kind of have to swivel these out like this and then maneuver around the rubber tread right there for the tire. But, you know, something to point out, we do have a a uh, motion, a kind of like a butterfly joint. It's not a ball peg uh, for that uh, shoulder joint, but you can move the arm back and forth. He does have a bicep swivel. He does have a double jointed elbow. And look at how beautifully sculpted that double jointed elbow is. We can see, even see the little piston in his, in his bend for his elbow. It's fantastic. Love that double jointed elbow. And then uh, he does have a wrist swivel and he does have finger articulation. Um, pretty much all fingers can move and you can do the big wahoo if you want to. So there's that and the thumb does move too. And that's pretty much it for that. He, I don't think he has a waist swivel. Let me double check. He might, he does, he does not. No, I don't believe he, oh yes, he does. Sorry, I was holding onto this back piece. Don't do that <laughs> by accident because I wasn't paying attention. But he does have a waist swivel. He can do the splits about that far and for a big guy, that's pretty damn good. Legs go forward, nice little ratchet right there. I gotta move this arm up to get full extension. There you go. Legs go back nicely. And the upper thigh swivel. It does have a double jointed knee. Really good range of motion with that double jointed knee. Holy Toledo. And then a boot swivel. These can swivel as well if you need them to and move out of the way for transformation's sake. And then the toes do pivot on each side. And they can bend. The back heel can bend and the front toe can bend. And that's pretty much it for articulation. I think he's pretty well done. 
as far as a larger figure, he's he's eight inches in scale, and um, you know, for a larger figure with bulkiness, he really gets the job done. I think. Okay, so my final thoughts for Dicamus, aka Roadbuster, is definitely a two thumbs up. Let me get my other thumb. Two rotating, transforming thumbs up. And uh, I would definitely recommend you pick him up. Um, now, granted, he does go for, I think, just a little bit over 100 bucks. Um, I think I picked him up for, what was it, uh, on Big Bad Toy Store. They had him for 108 That's what I paid. I'm just being honest with what I paid. He's going to... He's gonna, He's going to cost you a pretty penny if you really want him. Uh, but uh, maybe if you're not a Roadbuster fan, if you're not a Wreckers fan, then I'd say pass on him. But I think you're passing up on a great figure nonetheless. If you're a Transformers fan, regardless, I think this is uh, going to be one of those figures that you really do want. If you can find him for a cheaper price, I'd say definitely pull, pull the trigger. I think um, uh, even if you spend 90 bucks on him, I think you're getting your 90 bucks worth. Um, the Repro label is really pull out the rest of that sculpt and the, the, the rest of the detail within that figure. And uh, the articulation's really good. I love the overall sculpt, the regular sculpt that he does have without the repro labels helping. Um, I think he still is a good selling point on his own. And uh, I'm happy to, to have added him to my collection and couldn't be pleased uh, more so. But... Um, you know, it's up to viewer discretion if you want to pick Dykemus up. Uh, Mastermind Creations, I think, knocked another one out of the park here. And uh, I'm very pleased to have this guy. And, uh, yeah, couldn't recommend him enough. But uh, price point is a killer. Uh, is me trying to be truthful as much as possible. As much as I do like the figure, the price point does hurt. Ouch. So with that being said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you guys on the flip side.